Hey guys, welcome back to Blueprint Channel. It's TK, and on today's video, I'm actually going to showcase a lot of my Super Archer landings and the clone spell deployment after the update because your super archer can get a bit more riskier and maybe a bit more skillful but it doesn't matter man on today's video i'm hopefully going to showcase how it's done and also give you some tips on the clan castle that you should be using and why you should be using it so without any further ado let's just jump into this video man let's go Okay guys, let me pause this right here. I wanted to start it with a banger. This is probably one of the most value I've got with the Super Archer clone, but there is two things you need to kind of consider. First thing first being, look at the core of this base, right? You need to find the angles. Now, what I mean by angles is basically kind of like, if you see this expo, this multi is behind it. So if you have archers around here shooting it, there's no need to be next to the multi, but you will still take it out, same as the other side. And also if you see, if your archers are here and shoot the expo, they will give you the scatter. You don't have to be next to the scatter or your archers don't have to actually have access to the scatter for them to get it. That's the angles I'm talking about. Now, where do you land? Look at this core. There is so many empty spots there. But what I like to do when I see this many empty spots is either avoid it or if I have no other option and I need to land there, I'm going to land in the middle as much as I can of those two empty spots. Like this here area, there might be two bombs. And if you land the way I'm going to land, by the way, I'm not going to freeze any of these sweepers because I know the way they're going to push me, my blimp will still be inside this area. Look at that landing. You are going to activate any giant bombs that was on this corner. And if your goblins move to this clan castle, as you can see that little goblin, you are going to instantly activate the other giant bomb. But because you are close to it, it will still not damage you. If you land here, then these goblins go and then this giant bomb activates. That's when your archer is going to get damaged. So keep that in mind. Now, this player didn't have giant bombs, but look at my clone not a single area off the other side i'm trying to clone to because something like this happened to me in world championship and one side of the base was nothing no giant bombs nothing but the other side had a lot of traps and I, when i landed on the empty sides i was like okay maybe the player is bad they didn't trap the other side too so i cloned and i got greedy i cloned to the other side and i got two giant bombs that killed all my cloned archers. So don't do that. Now the next tip with your perfect super archer is that as you can see this lava hound is kind of annoying, it's just staying there. And that's when I saw on a lot of players, even in highest level of pro matches, I've seen they don't move the hound. Now this is where you cannot move the hound to this side because your archers will target it and move away. What you have to do is pull the hound back to the invisibility by dropping one archer in front of defenses because the archer will die and the hound will just move three, four-ish tiles into the area you dropped your archer. So then the hound will go back to the invisibility. Now look at this super archer man bro there is literally right just a town hall left in this space of course we have a monolith but who cares we have so, like 30 barbs to tank the monolith so monolith is literally one of the weakest defense for the strategy if you know how to kind of protect your heroes and it's too late by the time the monolith is gonna rain down on your heroes the base will already be finished by that time now this video is mostly for the super archer and i'm kind of bringing you as many bases as i possibly can with um well perfect examples of how to land where to land on this was a box base we're gonna go to a diamond base and also a ring base i might bring you two ring bases depending on you know because we get a lot of uh, comments about double poison ring bases and stuff so let's just move on to that okay guys so let me pause this right here this is the double poison um kind of ring base of course now this ring base has a lot of closed walls but mainly this won't be any like reference to the new super archer nerf or whatever you're gonna call it this just will be just a quick guide for those who were asking for the double poison just because we're doing this video of the super archer itself now once the base opens, you have only a few options because of the double poison. You can't really land the opposite side, right? You know, you can see how far 
this poison actually shoot and if you try to land a bit on between the eagle and this little kind of i can't tap on the wall for because of the king i think or the warden but between the eagle and the wall then the cc and the goblin of the you know um, your goblins off the clan castle might pull the cc in case if it's a titan or anything else it just will be weird because even if you don't pull the cc if it's three ice golem or anything else it's going to damage you later for the base and if the town hall stays up there's a lot of harder chances for you to funnel your heroes into it now what i like to do is don't use the warden basically and that means even if the town hall stays up you kind of have a chance of getting the three star back and maybe a lot of you have seen on my own videos on my channel that i recover from it because i have the warden the archers without a warden ability on ring bases that's the good thing if the town hall stays you're cool you can still recover but if you use a warden and the town hall stays that's a bit bad now look at this blimp it's just gonna go in and we're gonna land into that you know right area right there and i'm gonna clone as far into the town hall as i can like as close to the town hall basically and i pull the archers on top once i give my own super archers kind of um options for the invisibility the way i drop the invisibility is somehow in a way that for example right now you saw the cc was visible right when i see the invisibility i'm dropping will make something visible close to the archers that's when I pull the CC so my archers are not on the enemy clan castle and locked onto them. Now the rest of the base, you just need a nice funnel on the outside around the base to go in. And then like, for example, you can see this base. On the outside, there is nothing too much to get. That's why I'm sending a few barbs to go in with my main push so they can have some, you know, help inside the base. I add the Royal Champion really quickly to just speed things up on the far um, 3 o'clock-ish side of the base. And the rest is easy because you got the Town Hall. Now imagine if I didn't get the Town Hall. I could still wall break this wall really nice and heroes to go inside the core with a nice ability of Warden and add my champion on the top side so it would be kind of the same plan but doesn't matter if you get the town hall or not a lot of people get scared but one thing i can give you a tip on these bases is basically to have you know um don't be scared because it's double you know poison be happy because it's not double rage the double rage if the town hall stays up that's when you have a problem because of the damage the base can do to your heroes the double poison it's basically a town of 14 just with the few poison towers that's going to drop on you but you have a more than ability so no need to worry there okay guys we are here on silva's base and guys this is where it is a box base i know but this is a different tip i want to give you because sometimes the tornado trap can really mess up your landings not just because it can catch your blimp no i'm talking about when you land and then you find the tornado because then the tornado will pull you into the areas you have not found the trap that is important that's why you're gonna see what i do and how i deal with it on this attack right here i'm not gonna freeze the sweeper the other one Mm, it pushed me i was hoping for it to not push me but we still had a late warden ability and look at this i'm gonna land into right in the middle of this empty area as you can see right in the middle because if there is two giant bombs somehow kind of in a way that they put it or if it's one giant bomb spring traps or anything else we can find as many traps as possible now look at this um, you know tornado it's pulling me to the outside but i cloned back into the area i landed i didn't clone here i didn't clone between the eagle and expo there is so many empty spots i didn't clone into this area or i didn't clone into the area that this builder um is right here yeah but finally was able to tap on it i cloned into the area that i already found the traps that is something that not a lot of people do that's why they lose their archers and they're like well the tornado messed me up i didn't find this trap here here the clone spell guys you can really uh, have a nice uh, i would say angles with it especially when you found that area that you landed finally you can clone at the same area even if there was no tornado there so clone in the same area you land 
if there is so many empty spots around you so don't be greedy kind of like the same attack we didn't clone to the other side but on here this and the tornado kind of pulled us out of the place that i originally wanted to clone so i cloned back into that area and with the double clone that's the good thing about double clone because even if i lost those three archers that got pulled with the tornado i'm still going to have a few more archers cloned up now with the normal one clone that i used to attack with because the town of 15 had a lot of damage and a lot of good trap placements for a lot of the players and you lose more archers of course you're gonna have spells but you're not gonna have the damage anymore that's why the two clone for me personally is working very well right now as well especially when i can have that free spell also with it that is one of the biggest things and the reasons I switched to double clone but I hope this small tips on this archer clone that I cloned back into the area I landed was helpful and I just didn't clone on the area my archers was getting pulled to so that is an important tip and keep it in mind okay let me pause this right here we have another base and this is a ring base as you can see we have a rage spell we have invisibility and this is guys the way the player like to bait you in high legends they put in a way like they don't put really as um i would say symmetric ring bases that have both sides the same some people do you know don't get me wrong but some people really love to bait those super archer attackers so that's why i'm here to tell you different ways to approach these type of bases because normally on an average day any day of the day of the week oh my god i'm getting so confused right now if this invisibility tower was a rage between the town hall and the builder like the other side i would just go into the single and land in between here no bombs no nothing but there's a risk of of course if you clone and you find two giant bombs between the cc and the scatters as you can see in those empty areas and then you lose your archers that is a risk but you can kind of manage the clone but that's why sometimes it may be baited so what i like to do is find an angle to go without a warden again like the double poison if you don't get the town hall is fine but here is where i'm going to land in this area right here now you're going to see my exact landing because it's important there is a giant bomb right between these two there's a bomb tower and there's a giant bomb between these three so the town hall bomb tower and the invisibility tower if you go a bit forward than what i went forward you are going to lose your archers that's it you're done you finished you didn't even get a single defense but just look at where i land now this is also important i'm going to give you the tip on the clone on right this space because you can see double air um, and double spaces basically double tiles between these defenses can be giant bomb on the outer layer of the inside ring a lot of people love to do that like i've hit a lot of super archer clones and i know people love to do that but look at this land boom i didn't go too deep and look at my angle i'm not close to the bomb tower ray and um, what do you call that even um the area it damage after it gets destroyed i'm not even close to that that's why if you choose a little slightly lower angle so dropping blimp i dropped i think maybe from around here maybe i, I can kind of see it with the eye i wasn't paying attention to the blimp itself but if i would have dropped the blimp here or even here this is where the bomb tower ray and um, like area splash damage can actually hit you but look at this the goblins will go and activate the next giant bomb for you so if you land in a way to do this your archers will still be fine now look at my first invis this is what i like to do the way i drop my first invis is the way i want to drop the next two clones and the race for i'm dropping it onto the eagle and onto the monolith i'm not dropping on the same area i landed because i'm super close to this side it could be double giant bombs here that i didn't activate yet i know guys i'm an unlucky player when it comes to legends but never do these risks and this is how without a warning and you know landing on near a bomb tower two giant bombs and on an invisibility tower that you know can cost a lot of players to kind of one star or don't even get the town hall when they're going for it 
we still managed to get a decent value. This is not the best, most insane value you're gonna see, but we didn't use the warden, so that is a plus. So keep that in mind, man. And for the rest of the base, as you know me, I love to go into the next layer, which is the middle layer of the ring base, so my queen can have access to both sides. You've seen all those guys probably, and uh, yeah, man, most likely, I hope you understood what I meant by those small angles, the things that you have to look with your eyes. So not dropping the blimp here, but dropping it here. That can be the difference, you know? So you never know. And by the way, if there was a Titan in the CC, because we didn't use the Warden, there is no like, um, what do you call that? Uh, there is no feeling of uh, kind of, oh my God, I'm gonna lose my archer, so ne let's not choose this angle. No, because you didn't use the Warden, the Titan wouldn't follow. It would come out the CC and stay there because you're making everything invisible. So I hope that also helps you out a lot. We're gonna go to a you know diamond base here. Let's go to a diamond base, and that landing is a bit important, especially when you get a lot of skeleton traps next to you. Okay, guys, let me pause this right here. Now, this base was one of the toughest bases I had to plan on, just because look at the core. Honestly, look at how many empty spots there is all around this core right here. Like, it's full of empty spots. And then look at the town hall. I can't go from like a side angle because of the bomb tower. I can't just risk cloning because if there is a Titan, it can just stay right on my archers because the CC is too close. And I can't risk a lot just because there is an invis tower on the town hall, which makes everything invisible, including the monolith. So what is the plan on this base? Now, my general thought was to kind of choose one side of the base. Whenever you can't plan with a super archer on a diamond base, okay, keep that in mind, on a diamond base, always choose one side to go for and clear that whole side off, not the core, but the base. This is what I mean. I'm going to go and land between these two walls because there's empty areas, and I really want to clear one side of this base. Now, let me put it on one time. Once I see there is Teslas here, this is just traps for the Hawks or some Lolo attackers that already zapped a few things and don't want their you know loons to go into the core. But this is where I know there is no spot for giant bombs in here. There's literally none. That's why it's a lot easier to take higher risks. Now, let me go and land and you're gonna see my clone spell. Look at that. I clone into the core and this is where that tornado in the core will pull my archers, stall them a bit and then I found skelly traps. Now, do not attempt to pull these skelly traps because that's what's gonna happen. Your archers will fully leave this invisibility spell and you will be, you know, kind of messy. But one thing I like to do is when, whenever I give them options, that's when I pull. My archers killed a few skellies and then I pulled the rest. That is faster than the archers um, switching targets. So when my archers shoot the skellies, I start to pull the others. That's why they will be there, some of them at least. You know, you can see these archers also there. I may have lost a few, but I got my value. I didn't pull the skellies right as I saw them. I waited a bit, let them kill the first few, then pull. So you lose just slightly archers if you are a bit unlucky. Now, for the rest of the base, this is where it gets interesting because I might just keep this um, attack going because it was an interesting attack personally for me. The way I go in with my heroes is a bit different on this base. I go with kind of separation of the heroes. I like to go with the queen to the town hall because for me right now on this base it's easier to funnel the queen and then I go with the king on the 12 o'clock to go into the eagle. Following this air defense, I am think Yes, I think yeah, I'm going to kill the king too, just because I have less damage on the queen. And then once I see the queen has a nice path, I go in with the king. I'm not waiting because you are going to time fill. So that's why have that king go. Queen goes in, I have a free spell that I told you with the seven invisibility and one clone, 
this town hall would have gone invisible simple as that man so keep this in mind man this free spell can give you so much value and for the rest of the base because we got the core the king and rc can come around and go finish off now because this takes a lot of time the way you have to prepare this and the way you have to execute it that's why i'm going with the champion on the opposite side usually i go in with the champion with my king but not on this scenario because we're going to time fill it's simple as that actually i think i may have time filled this i'm not sure i think maybe it was right on time maybe it was right on time but i hope you got the understanding of this super archer too the way we land the way we think of the clone spell on all those type of bases and of course just a bit of sui and um, i would say tips for you as well and just a bit of you know those double poison ring based tips for you so i really did like do hope you enjoyed this video if you did like it and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and leave us some comments about what you want to see more of maybe guides on this strategy and i hope you enjoyed the videos that are on your screen right now so take care and peace